presentations okay. to lead us off in the discussion. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, uh, Dennis, since you started uh, off by saying you hadn't uh, been to Des Moines before, I, I sh I'm happy to say, well, maybe I'll stand up because I can't actually see you very well. I'm, I'm happy to say that I have actually uh, lived in Iowa for a number of years, uh, from uh, uh, kind of formative years from ages 3 through 11 in, um, in Osage, which is in the northern part of the state, just down the road from Cresco, where uh, Norman Borloff was from. And I had seen him speak earlier in a couple of places, but I've never really met him and talked to him until we, we met up in, uh, in Mozambique at the start of Sasakawa Global 2000 activities. And uh, we were talking about the, you know, how SG 2000 would fit in and what the challenges in Mozambique were and so on. And I mentioned to him that I had lived in Osage at uh, New Cresco a little bit and thought we would get right back into discussion on, uh, you know, fertilizer, but he said, oh, Osage, great wrestling team. We had so much trouble, and he kind of went through his wrestling season of uh, Osage versus Fresco, uh, which, uh, you, know, you, you know, Iowa does, does leave its mark. You know, quite a competitor. Quite a competitor. Um, but in any case, I'm delighted to be here and, um, uh, and comment on some of this. I, I don't uh, want to take up too much time, because I know we'll have a lot of good questions and, and interaction, but there are just a couple of things uh, that I would like to uh, to highlight. Certainly all of this looks uh, like wonderful news, I'll have to say, and it fits in very well with uh, what uh, FAO's focus has, has become and has been for a long time on sustainable intensification of production as a way of kind of summing up what, uh, what we are trying to do. Um, and I had heard a lot about the Zambia story for a long time from our uh, FAO colleagues as kind of the, uh, the paragon of, of conservation agriculture and what, what else should do. And we sent a lot of people from Kenya there to look at it and, and other things. And I've got, uh, for the question section, only one question on that about uh, cover crops. I didn't see much discussion of cover crops, but that seemed to be one of the key, uh, the key strengths. But uh, and I think all of the presentations really highlighted extremely well this idea of evergreen agriculture and the challenges that are out there. Um, I've been back in the U.S. for a couple of years, uh, and it often seems like I'm back to do kind of missionary work on some of these issues. Uh, and living in Washington in particular, I think there is a, uh, a real strong tendency to uh, not look at the complexity of issues, but rather to kind of limit everything to kind of the most simplistic terms possible. And uh, we are, for those of you who, uh, who don't live here, uh, is, is not a very good situation, actually. And I think it's, uh, it's somewhat uh, uh, worse than before in that regard. And, uh, and everything that the presenters talked about um, are really complex systems, as Carlos pointed out throughout. I mean, there's, you know, mixed systems, and Dennis, too, and, and of course, Bullard, and, and how you present this. It is all really complex, not just uh, in terms of production systems, but in terms of the science and so on, uh, but is, in fact, really quite optimistic in what, in what can be done. And we find, I think, in the U.S., and in Washington, I suppose, in particular, uh, really this polarization around really simple messages of kind of GMOs on one hand or organic on the other, or livestock is either bad or good, um, and kind of a pessimism versus optimism and, uh, and so on. And it, you know, it sounds like a caricature, but it is in fact really detrimental. And I think one of the uh, 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 really important aspects of World Food Prize events is in fact this a discussion of the complexity around these issues and kind of the reality of what you can do and uh, in looking at the numbers and looking at, at what can be done. And uh, this really was a, a wealth, I think, in these three presentations of experience on, on what that looks like and what needs to be done and so on. And I think uh, uh, somehow this uh, needs to inform more the discussion, particularly in the U.S. I'm not so sure about uh, about Europe, and some of you would know that, that situation better, but here really I think we do need much more sophistication around uh, the discussion.
discussion of what can be done and what needs to be done and what actually is happening in rapidly in this rapidly changing environment that uh, where the challenges are undoubtedly severe and daunting but there's no reason we can't meet those and these are, are wonderful examples of, of how we would do that and um, I think I will stop there and I've got a couple of specific questions but I'll save those I think when we get into the discussion part. Thank you, Dan, and, uh, and formally introduce uh, Dr. Mahabub Hussain, uh, who is now the president and CEO of the largest, I believe, uh, NGO in the developing world, uh, with about 160,000 staff working with uh, the BRAC, uh, Bangladesh Rural Assistance Committee. So, uh, Mahabub, please. Thank you, Dennis, for uh, giving me the opportunity to say a few words uh, on this reinventing agriculture in the 21st century. Um, Dennis was my former colleague at Atiri. I suppose that's why he gave me this, this opportunity of talk, but I'm also coming from uh, the civil society the background. Uh, as Dennis has mentioned, uh, I did work for RAC, Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee. Uh, we are not only working in Bangladesh, now we are operating in nine countries outside Bangladesh, five in Africa, uh, three in Asia, Afghanistan, including Afghanistan, uh, and uh, recently we have opened our office in Haiti, we operate in post-conflict uh, uh, countries, uh, post-disaster countries, because this organization started as a relief organization in Bangladesh in 1972. Um, but the premise that was set in this meeting is that um, we need to again double food production in the 21st century. I think the projections was much less earlier, but uh, recent demographic projections which show that because of the advances made in controlling HIV AIDS, the African population is going to grow much faster than it was projected, projected earlier and obviously it, it uh, means much more pressure on increase in food production. Uh, in this century. <clears throat> uh, so the, the talk is, uh, we have to do something unusual. I just attended IFRI's 2020 uh, uh, reception sort of dinner. And uh, there, the IFRI DZ was talking about, I think they have been talking about this for the last year, that we can't think of business as usual. We have to think business as unusual uh, in, in order to uh, address this, uh, this challenge. Um, and as we look at the past, uh, the focus uh, for food production was mostly commodity-based, like agriculture-based, as you know, to the CDM institutions, all of them are uh, agriculture-based. We have made tremendous uh, progress in uh, developing technologies, uh, but more for favorable systems. We are now talking about uh, more difficult challenges for developing technology for uh, unfavorable system, if we have to address the issues of uh, Africa, uh, South Asia, and, and, and others, because we have almost reached uh, the potential of the technologies that have been developed for the, uh, uh, for the global systems. Uh, so in this context, I think the presentations that we have uh, seen here, um, the three on talking about using trees for replacing Nitrogen, because uh, not only of the, of the issue of uh, adverse environmental effects of, of nitrogen uh, issue, but I think the economic compulsion also that with uh, faster economic growth in some of the developing countries like India and China, you have the demand for fuel is, is going up, and fertilizer prices are associated with fuel prices. So the fertilizer would not, would not be available uh, for crop production in future. So in that sense, looking at agroforestry, this tree, which is, which is what, fed hernia, albida trees, the demonstration that has been given, which is grown in, in Africa, could be an innovation for <coughs> uh, replacing uh, nitrogen fertilizer for increased crop production uh, in that. Uh, we have had the presentation from Zambia focusing on conservation agriculture. Uh, using, using zero tillage for increasing food production uh, in order to uh, conserve uh, 
this is resource conserving technologies that we have been talking about. We have increasingly have to go for that. And then, obviously, uh, the demand for livestock product has been growing very fast. Uh, this is nothing new. We have been thought about uh, that. And uh, as a result of uh, the fast increase in livestock uh, products, obviously, the demand for maize as livestock feed has been growing, so there will be much more pressure on, on maize production than on than uh, on cereal production rice and wheat in future. Uh, in that context, I would like also like to mention uh, one particular sort of, uh, two particular points uh, which has not come through here is, one is that, uh, <coughs> you know, India and China is now growing by almost double digit rate, from 8 to 10 percent. And we see that growth has now been trickled down to even, even the poor and the income of the poor. Um, Households in those countries have been growing, and India and China now account for one third of the of the global population. So the increase in income of the lower at the lower uh, income level of the households, uh, the demand for uh, housing actually you see uh, large sort of housing boom happening in these countries, and the demand for timber has been growing very fast. We haven't seen any projection. We have seen the projection of different food, but not of the of the timber. And my sense is that it has been growing very fast. And unless we focus on uh, uh, homestead gardening, social forestry, agroforestry, and others, there will be much more pressure on deforestation in, in those countries. So this, uh, that is a, an additional need for focusing on, on agroforestry. Uh, possibility of growing more, more trees within the homestead and, and on agricultural fields without uh, having negative effect on agriculture. So in that sense, the innovation that you have been mentioned is not innovation. I suppose that tree is, is already grown in Africa uh, content. Uh, so that, that becomes very, very important. The second point I would like to mention is the focus on, on small farmers, small and, and marginal farmers um, in those countries. And if you look at the resources, actually quite a substantial part of the land resources for these farmers are in the homestead. So you have to go for more intensification of the, of the homestead in order to address the challenge uh, for this century. And in that sense, both forestry and, and subsistence-based livestock production using the homestead resources would be an important uh, area to, to look at in the future. So if we, work, if we would like to address those systems, obviously we have to come out of the, so far, the commodity-based uh, agriculture research extension and development that we have pursued in the last century. And we have to focus now more on uh, system-based, agro-ecosystem focused, uh, integrated or mixed uh, farming system in order to address, address these challenges. And I think this presentation uh, specifically focused on, on that sort of business as business unusual kind of method rather than the business usual method uh, in, this, in this century. Um, on this, I have uh, one question for you on the on the trees. I, I know that uh, this is a good model for for Africa because this tree grow during the dry season when there is not much crop in the field, but in the wet season they remain dormant. They shed their leaves and and produce fertilizer for the for the crop. Uh, you think of what would be the situation in the Asian context, particularly in South Asia context. Uh, crops are grown both in uh, dry and the wet season. Uh, it's very intensive production. Uh, would the trees be uh, adaptable in the South Asia context? With giving that question to you, I uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity.